Hi friends, thank you so much for coming today to practice with me. Today is a short and energetic vinyasa practice and we're going to have a great intention from this book I use a lot in the classes I teach locally and it's a book of prose and essays by Young Pueblo. You can check him out on Instagram or from his book here you can get on Amazon but it's a great book I find lots of inspiration from it so that's where our powerful intention will come from today so thanks so much for coming grab some water play some fun music and meet me on the mat let's start our practice today standing so come to the top of your mat place your feet right under your hips anchor down at your feet stand tall in the body Zip up your core gently, tuck your chin just a little bit. Let's have a deep breath in through the nose and out through the nose. Let's do that two or three more times at our own pace where all we're doing is letting go of the day that we've had. Grateful for this chance to practice a little bit of yoga and add a little bit of yoga into our day to day. So let's start to cultivate our breath by matching the length of the inhale to the length of the exhale. And then even starting to breathe in in a way where we fill the lungs from bottom to top. So we want to feel like we're getting a full breath of air on every inhale and letting it go completely on every exhale. So closing the eyes, relaxing the face, just having a few more breaths like this while I read to you our intention today. And it goes like this. You have walked through fire, survived floods, and triumphed over demons. Remember this the next time you doubt your own power. So remembering all the things you've been through and how strong it's made you. Remember who you are the next time you doubt your own power. Let's bring our hands to prayer pose. Just savoring that thought for a minute. Remember who you are and how strong you are the next time you doubt yourself. On the next inhale, let's sweep the arms out and up. Lengthen the body, exhale as we take it into airplane, hinging from hips, reaching the arms right back behind us. So we'll set it up really good this first time and then we're going to flow. So let's bend the knees, pull the core in, pull the shoulder blades together, reach through your arms, reach through your fingertips, feel the triceps engaging. It's a strong pose. So let's achieve that every time when we flow with it, even though we're not holding it so long. So on the inhale, let's release, really reach up, lengthen the body. Exhale, take it back to airplane. Breathe with it. Inhale, rise. Exhale, airplane. We're going to do a few more. Just settling into our practice. Getting in the habit of moving with breath. Feeling this pose. Reaching up, lengthening. And then feel all the back work going on as you take it into airplane. So heating up the body. Moving with breath. And just getting in the habit of the vinyasa style of yoga. Moving on the inhale, moving on the exhale. Let's have one more. Arms are getting warm, I hope. <laughs> Let's inhale, rise. Exhale, come to your prayer pose. Pause for a breath and step out wide on your mat, toes aimed out, a wide-legged stance for some squatting. So let's zip up the core again. Inhale, reach up through your arms. Exhale, pull down through the shoulder blades as you squat. Inhale, we rise. Exhale, squat. So keep on squatting on your exhale. Thinking about how we do this though. So we wanna make sure when we squat, we're hinging from our hips, sending the hips down and back not shifting forward at the knees. So in yoga, we always are about the business of protecting and nourishing our joints. So making sure that no joint feels strain or pain. Core is engaged. Moving with breath. One more time. Bring it down, pull down through the shoulder blades, rise up one last time. We'll change it up. 
arms straight out. <sighs> Nothing has changed other than that. Let's really lengthen the arms, zip up the core. And if you want to, we can come up to the tippy toes, lifting the heels. Core is engaged, pelvic floor is active, balancing. And then on an exhale, release the heels, inhale, let's bring it up, exhale, rest and walk your feet back together. Let's touch the shoulder tops, give the elbows these big circles, giving our shoulder joints a little mobility work. Go the other way with it. Then relax, do the same thing for the wrists, and then reverse the direction of that. Awesome job. On the next inhale, sweep the arms all the way up. Exhale, take a dive all the way down, forward fold. Then let's bend the knees a lot, plant the palms, and step to plank pose. When we get to our plank pose, let's lift up through the shoulders. No sagging in the shoulder joints like I'm doing right now, but press up through them, keep them active. Let's zip up the core, press through the heels. At any time, if you need to rest, rest. If any time you wanna to drop to the knees for a kneeling plank, you can do that too. Otherwise, if you wanna amp it up a little bit, let's keep the shoulders stable, keep the core engaged, and let's just lift one foot at a time. Just lift up and down, and up and down. We'll do that a few times. So think about squeezing your glute when you lift that leg. And it can just be like an inch. You don't have to lift very much. In fact, we don't want to lift so high that we come out of alignment with the lumbar area. Good. On your next exhale, let's take it to downward facing dog. Plant the palms. Bend the knees so that you can lengthen your spine and aim your tailbone up. Stabilize your shoulders, pulling the shoulder blades down the back. Have a few heel presses alternating sides and then to get moving again let's inhale lift the left leg up in the air exhale come into plank bring the knee underneath you to the opposite elbow feel the obliques work inhale lift it back up let's do it two more times exhale bring it forward inhale lift the leg exhale see if you can touch that opposite elbow We'll inhale, lift, and exhale, come to downward dog. Let's do the other side. Inhale, lift the right leg. Exhale, bring it across underneath you. Touch the elbow if you can. Inhale, lift. Exhale, bring it forward. One more time. Inhale, lift. Exhale, forward. On the inhale, lift the leg. Downward facing dog. Now let's lower the right knee directly underneath us, right under the hip. Stabilize the left shoulder and lift the left leg and the right arm. We're looking down at the mat. We're flexing the left ankle. We're leveling hips and reaching in opposite directions. One more breath here. And on the exhale, bring it down, but walk it back out, tuck the toes, come to downward dog again. Good, have a breath the exact same sequence but this time we'll lower down and do the other side for that spinal balance pose but first inhale lift the left leg exhale diagonally underneath the body to the elbow inhale rise exhale bring it underneath last time inhale lift exhale to the elbow we'll rise up on an inhale and exhale to downward dog next inhale lift your right leg up exhale bring it underneath you and across Inhale, rise, exhale, to the opposite elbow. Inhale, lift, exhale, bring it forward, squeeze the core. Inhale, lift the leg, exhale, downward dog. Now let's lower the left knee, plant the right palm and shoulder, lift your right leg and your left arm. The other side. So again, we're flexing at the ankle. We're reaching through that heel leveling the hip, and even reaching that left arm forward. Weight-bearing shoulders, super strong. On the exhale, bring it down to all fours and take it back to child's pose. Find a child's pose that works for you. 
Knees can be together or far apart. Catching your breath, maybe giving your wrists a few figure eights. And then walking our arms and our fingertips away from us, so lengthening the body. And then walking them over toward the right side of the mat. Stretching through the left side of the body. And then walking them toward the left side of the mat. Stretching the right side of the body. Walk them back to neutral and on the inhale, rise back up to all fours. Plant the palms right underneath the shoulders for cat and cow. On an inhale, aim the tailbone up, lift the heart. On an exhale, round into cat. Inhale, lift back into cow. Exhale, take it back into cat. Start to match it up to your breath again. So if you got out of breath on that sequence, make it a priority right now to come back to that evenly paced breath, catching your breath. Good, let's have one more of each pose. One more cow, one more cat. Doing great and relax to all fours. So we'll step to a forward fold, one foot at a time. On an inhale, we'll hinge up, reverse swan diving, rising, reaching, and resting. Have a deep breath in, exhale, relax. Good job. All right, so grab your block, hold it right above your knees at the inner thighs and squeeze. Think of anchoring down at your feet still, rising tall still. On an inhale, let's reach up. As we exhale, let's twist to the right, looking over the right hand. Inhale, lift back up. Exhale, twist to the left. Good. Inhale, we reach. Exhale, we twist. We'll just do that a couple more times per side. Getting some gentle rotation in the spine. And we're stabilizing the hips and the knees by having the block to help us have an extra cue to think of. We don't want the block to lean or shift either way. One more time to the right. The block doesn't move. One more time to the left. Awesome. Bring it all the way up. Prayer pose and come down to a chair squat. So that means hips go down and back. Same thing with our wide-legged squat that we did earlier. We don't want knees to jut forward and put pressure on the knees. Instead, we send the hips down and back. Now take a little break. Inhale, rise. Exhale, come back down to your chair. As low as you can go. One more time. Exhale, chair pose. Now let's take this neutral spine that we're in, no rounding, and let's twist to the right, twisting chair. Let's bring it back to neutral. Neutral spine, let's twist to the left. Feel the obliques working. Let's inhale, rise up. Exhale, come down to chair and twist to the right. Inhale, bring the arms overhead. Exhale, twisting chair to the left. Let's do that about two more times per side. Really, really work those obliques. If you're engaging the obliques properly here, then we're feeling quite a bit of ab work. Deep breaths and finishing to the left. On an inhale, bring it up, <clears throat> excuse me. Exhale, relax. Just put the block to the side, come back to the top of the mat, mountain pose. Have a deep breath in, exhale. With hands on hips, let's step the right leg back for warrior one. Press down firmly into the mat where the right foot meets the mat. Shift so, or, or aim your hips so that they face the front end of your mat, the short side of your mat. Core is engaged. Let's reach up. Exhale, bend your left knee, warrior one. So when we bend the front knee, we don't come off of the back leg. We're still pressing down firmly through the back leg. So this is definitely a strength pose here. We want to feel a lot of work in that back leg, the right leg and the core. Deep breathing. On an exhale, swim the arms back behind you. Maybe we interlace if that's comfortable, and if that's not comfortable, we just reach. We're just opening across the heart and shoulders. Deep breathing. 
On the next exhale, let's start to hinge from our hips, pausing when we're halfway down. And if you have a block, let's release arms down to the block. We'll put it at the left instep. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, lengthen the left leg. Pyramid stretch, stretching the hamstring. So we don't want to lock either knee. So we stay really aware of that. It's very easy in this pose, very tempting to kind of lock out at the knees. Let's make sure we don't do that. We're listening to the stretch that we don't take it too far. If we want more stretch, let's achieve that by hinging from hips, keeping the spine long, as opposed to completely rounding in your spine and losing alignment in your spine. So keep some alignment in your spine. Take a deep breath. Exhale, let's shift forward to that left leg. You can use the block or the floor, whatever you like. Let's lift the right leg up in the air. Flex the ankle, square the hips to the floor. Let's lift as high as we can with that hip alignment. Squeeze that right glute. Let's have about two more breaths here. Timing your breath, matching the inhale to the exhale, and then releasing that foot down to a forward fold. On the inhale, swan diving up. Reach, 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 exhale, rest. Let's release hands to hips again and step the left leg back, warrior one, other side. So again, press down into that left foot, reach up through your arms, scoop your core in, and then bend the right knee. So in our warrior one pose here, we're thinking of pressing down, 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 down through the left leg, scooping in the core, and always aware of the hips that they stay squared to the short side of the mat in front of you. Breathe big. Engage your glutes. On an exhale, swim the arms back. Again, we can just reach hands for one another or we can interlace hands. It's up to you. Keep working through that back leg and come back to your breath. Match your inhale to your exhale. Let's start to hinge from hips, keeping the back flat, stopping when we're parallel to the floor and on an exhale, releasing hands to the block. On an inhale, let's lengthen the spine. On an exhale, let's lengthen the right leg. So again, really aware of the knees that we don't want to lock them. Let's think about pressing both feet into the mat equally. We're listening to the stretch. We're not going too fast in it, because that would be counterproductive. We're easing into our stretch. And if you find you want a little bit more, again, let's do that by hinging from hips rather than rounding in the spine. And the block is so handy here, and it's got three different heights. So choose the height that you need it to be. On the next inhale, let's bend the right knee, shift forward. We can use the block or we can just use the floor. Let's lift off, lift the left leg. Let's square our hips toward the mat, trying not to let them open, but square them down. Flex the ankle. With that alignment in mind, let's lift the left leg as high as we can. Let's have a couple of full breaths here. Matching your inhale to your exhale. On the next exhale, release to forward fold. Relax your neck. And let's step back to downward dog. Lift the hips up high. Stabilize the shoulder blades. Pull them down the back. Let's lift the left leg up in the air. Bend at the knee and open the hip to the left side. We're stretching through that left hip flexor but we're keeping the shoulder blades stabilized and we're not letting this affect our torso or our shoulders. So shoulders are still anchored. On an exhale, release to downward dog. Inhale, lift your right leg, bend at the knee, this time opening hips to the right. So again, stay aware of your shoulder blades. Kind of anchor that right armpit area so it doesn't start to open up to the right. Also, we really just want this to affect the hips. On an exhale, take it to downward dog. 
have a breath and exhale come down to the knees last working segment we'll do let's come down to the elbows for dolphin we'll wrap our hands around our opposite elbows to space the elbows correctly and then hold hands press your forearms into the mat that'll be your foundation here scoop your core in pull the shoulder blades down and back and then option to tuck the toes lift into dolphin really similar to downward dog a little more work in the shoulders think about pressing your heart toward your knees aiming the tailbone up and we're looking at like our ankles or our shins Good job. Let's have one more full breath here. And then stabilize your shoulders. Let's start to walk the feet to the back short side of the mat, coming into a forearm plank. Stabilizing shoulders, pressing through the heels, squeezing the core. Deep breathing. And on an exhale, let's just lower down to the mat. On the inhale, let's pull the core in, lift into locust. So we're lifting the body off the mat, squeezing the back side of the body. So we're working all the muscles in the back side of the body right now. Back muscles, glutes. Think about all the shoulder blade work here. Even reaching through the fingertips once again, it's getting the triceps some work. Take one more really big breath here, and then release down, and press to child's pose. Have two deep breaths. Just letting your spine relax, letting your back muscles relax, letting your face relax. And on the next inhale, let's ease up to all fours pose and down to a seated pose at the hips. <sighs> nice job. Let's find the sitting bones and then let's bring the left leg underneath the right. So left legs on the floor. We're bringing the heel to the opposite hip. Then we're going to cross the right leg over it and keep the knee up. So we're getting some hip stretching going on. Now, if this isn't comfortable, uh, join the club. Tons of people don't like this version. So if this isn't comfortable, you can always just have an easy cross-legged pose, whatever's comfortable. So find what fits you. We can't do it all. Let's put the right hand behind us, left arm reaching forward. Have a deep breath in. Exhale, turn to the knee. Have a gentle twist. So if you're in an easy cross-legged pose right now, you're just having a gentle twist. In other words, there's no knee to hug. You're just having a gentle twist and we're all keeping our spine tall. Now, if you are hugging your knee, you're hugging it toward your chest so that we're feeling a deeper stretch um, deep in that right hip area. Let's have one more breath here with a tall spine. Exhale, gently release and we'll switch legs. Even if you're cross-legged, switch legs. So let's bring the right leg on the bottom and then the left leg crossing over, but the knee is up in the air. So there's quite a difference when you make sure that your leg is active here. So this time put your left palm behind your left hip, right arm reaching forward, have a breath in. Exhale, turn to the knee, hug it to the chest, and we're all keeping a tall spine. Let's relax the face. enjoying a deep twist at the end of your practice and we want this twist to feel nice we want it to release tension not cause it so stay really aware in your twist that it's not painful and that you can absolutely still breathe easily on that last exhale let's ease out of this and let's all come into a cross-legged pose whatever is comfortable seated tall shoulders back let's inhale let's lift the left arm bend at the elbow Get a little tricep stretch. So we're letting our breath ease back to normal, cooling down, heart rate coming down. 
Oh, let's release the arms. Let's do the other side. Bring your right arm up, bend at the elbow. Have a few breaths here. Relax your face. Let's come back to that intention. The next time you, you forget who you are and you forget your strength and your power, remember it. Remember who you are. Remember all that you've gone through. Let's release the arms down to the knees. We remember all that we've gone through, how strong we can be, and we remember who we are. Let's roll the shoulders down and back. On an inhale, rise up through the sides of the body. Reach up. Exhale, bring it to your prayer pose and close the eyes. We'll have a few normal breaths. As I read that to you one more time, you have walked through fire, survived floods, and triumphed over demons. Remember this the next time you doubt your own power. So taking that with you the rest of your day, remember this the next time you doubt yourself. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. I appreciate it. And the light and life in me honors the light and life in you. Namaste.